Yes, I met Idil 25 years ago in Brussels, in the house of uh, Pula Tatcha, who was at that time uh, the Turkish also ambassador in, 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 in Belgium. So this was already a sp rather special environment where there was a lot of, uh, let's say, cultural uh, uh, richness going on in this house. The discussion came immediately, we came immediately to, to, the, to talking in a more profound way on, on music. So this, but then of course, then I, I, I met, this was first with her husband, with Chefik, then I met her also then later on in Brussels personally. And this is uh, meeting her, uh, there was an information already, an exchange, you know, you were not, comp you were not at all, uh, you were fully prepared to meet her. You have listened to her interpretation. We had the con connection even before with friends. So there was this moment that, oh yes, it, it's very natural to meet her. This was like, oh yes, I know her since such a long time. Nevertheless, we met for the first time. And she has this very charming smile. So uh, how could one resist and just to be fond of her as a human being? Yes, I mean, uh, then I, I really, when I got this also uh, Amy production with all the nine sym symphonies, and then of course I was very curious because I ac actually sometimes I had heard that from different interpretation. So I did this rather systematically, the nine symphonies, uh, but I always took myself the time. I did not make this now. I did for every week one, one of the symphonies, uh, in combination with the score, <laughs> then you have the scores. And then of course I had immediately, uh, was ex deeply impressed by that, that uh, the way she also transfers uh, 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 also of, uh, as a mastery from Liszt, you know, to bring the full orchestra sound in the piano, no? and make it adapt to the piano. This is an art in itself, uh, which very few uh, really, I think, pianists are able to, to make the transition from the orchestra sound to the piano sound. And nevertheless, always being aware, oh, this is the symphony, the symphonies of Beethoven. So uh, this was, took me immediately. Of course, for me, uh, when I really started to listen to her interpretations, first of all, you know, in form of, of LPs, and then, of course, later on, on CDs, no? then I was, uh, became immediately aware that her interpretation have the profound richness of the culture of the 19th, even 19th century. That means uh, Idil uh, had such a humble and on the other side profound approach to this course. In her case, you hear that she every page and note she has studied but she also does that in connection with a deep understanding of the period in which the works were created, which is another dimension. And then getting the third dimension, how to transport that to a public of today, to a public, you know, which is in the hall. I mean, that, that I'm talking about uh, the communication, you know, which is very important. And I think uh, her humble approach is teaching us also today uh, to, to approach respectfully to these masterpieces, and uh, which is certainly, you know, so to say, people say it doesn't fit in our time. But I'm glad that it doesn't fit in our time <laughs> because we have a witness in a tradition of, you know, the big also women pianist, interpreter. I'm talking about, of course, Clara Wieck, uh, Wieck Schum Schumann Wieck. Then we have also funny, of course, uh, Mendelssohn. Mendelssohn. There are these kind of uh, central figures who give an indication. With Idil, you can also step by step see in her education, but then uh, she was brought up, where she comes from, what she did, and in which way she developed her own very personal style which is of great importance for our time. 
Her personal style is that she has highest respect for the score, which is not at all guaranteed of, of, of pianists, young pianists no, of today. That means for her, uh, the creation of a master, uh, master work is the first. She has this kind of very humble serving uh, the score and the composer, which is which is not clear in our time, you know. Per first, oh, I make a new, a fancy interpretation of, of the transcriptions of Liszt and Berlioz and, and Beethoven, but it's it's then a, a kind of an egomaniac interpretation, which has then altogether culturally, co from the point of composition, nothing to do with the score itself, and that means uh, uh, the idyll gives us back uh, the much more profound approach. To the, to the original scores, which is most important. Otherwise, we are losing a lot of, also in the best sense, at, uh, the, the to understand even the historical development, to bring it to a public of today. So you better listen well to Idil Biret to make you, uh, to, uh, to again, to study more profoundly even the scores. This is what I think about Idil Beirut. Yes, first of all, she has, as I said before, th the very profound, also traditional sense. I mean, just being involved profoundly in this course and, and out of her his even traditional artistical approach with the right you now also developing she is developing she makes uh, her programs as a permanent I think also personal uh, steps f towards even the music between the 18th and 19th and uh, she also is playing marvelously also don't forget about uh, one what I do enjoy enormously when she is playing Bach there's nothing she, in a certain way, she cannot play. But she does it always with the rich knowledge of this course within an historical context. And there are hardly anybody who can play as well, you know, coming from, from, uh, from Bach over then Beethoven, uh, you know, then become to, to Liszt and then become even, you know, to, to Boulez. I mean, this is enormous out of her enormous richness of taking yourself the time. She is not a chaste, uh, you know, a pop star in, the, in a bad sense, you know. She takes herself time for preparation, as I know by own experience. The way she, when, when we discuss even the program now, here f uh, two years ago for Ankara, when we prepared this now also, thanks also to her husband, no? uh, the way we discussed all the pieces and then convince her that she really should confront Les Preludes and she was shy about that, you oh, have to study it, uh, having scruples to about to do such a piece. No? And then now she loves it, and, and, and you will hear tonight an extraordinary interpretation of, for, for, you know, for two hands of Les Preludes. So that means she still has the curiosity of a, you know, of, a, of a teenager, of a young woman. She always wants to learn new things. And I think this makes also her interpretations also very vital. The, her enormous creative also curiosity. I would say that. So she is certainly every evening, she is never repeating herself. She's always giving birth, you know, um, of the score every evening with all the respect, with all the uh, being serious uh, about the preparation. And this is what I really love and respect, uh, you know, uh, about Idil. She is certainly an extraordinary artist. Of course, I mean, I wouldn't be here even, in, I wouldn't have come even to Ankara and even coming to now uh, again to Istanbul if I would not be fully convinced of her quality. I also had the privilege of having heard most important uh, pianists. So uh, Idil represents with her list interpretation especially, no? a quality which is in itself 
so unique by uh, the prof profoundness of preparation, by always going on, working over again and again. And uh, when you, uh, and, and even getting in the spirit of list, when we had the whole discussion, I mean, when we, and I'm talking now very personal also on idyll, the preparation mm, in con connection with list transcription, for example, by Berlioz or by the transcription of list of the Wagner works, we had a very profound discussion on in which way is the difference of list and then the, the regional work like Berlioz or now in, the, in our case of Wagner. So uh, this kind of pro approach and openness no, makes also, you can hear that the, the moment she starts to play. So, huh, wow, <laughs> it's still that and I think this should be like that, that the public is taken. Of, of course, I mean, the, they are, this, is a, this is a very serious topic uh, which, which, which has to be discussed out, especially in our time, because we are still in a male chauvinist uh, society where generally you have to be very tough even sometimes, uh, you know. But Idil is, it did not play the typical play of women to make career. She, first of all, is dedicated to the work of art. Then, of course, you know, we have one side the, the obstacle of being a woman than even to be a Turkish woman, so which is another obstacle to overcome. So you have to be enormously <laughs> brilliant to succeed to make such a career. That means you have the du double charge to overcome all these idiotic male chauvinist uh, pr uh, prejudices. And when you just close your eyes and just listen to that and then you open up, oh, this is uh, so, so special, then uh, you forget about, of course, all about that. And, uh, and then we, of course, we should speak up and always to give a loud voice for women, talented women, also of today in 2013, you know, to get fair condition in the big uh, music uh, business world, no? where still you have to have the right connections. No? So there's a lot to do. And uh, so that's why we're having now here even this beautiful place, this theater. We are, uh, we are making connection with the past and the present and the future, by having, having teaching also and giving this to the public. There's a, there's a very beautiful combination, even in uh, you know, connecting music as bridges. Istanbul as a, like, a unique place in history. <laughs> so when you talk here in Istanbul in combination with Idil Birin also, let's say I have also a kind of a heavy burden sometimes even coming out of the Liszt and Wagner tradition. But when, when, when you do that in combination with Idil Birin, who also herself has this enormously rich background indi indi independently of her as, a, as, a, as an artist of today, no? So this, I think this gives a very special dimension, which I'm very grateful to be part of that. I mean, of course, when you, when you first listen to that on the LP, this is one experience. You get very curious. I got very curious. I want to know, uh, Edil, this must be uh, something very special indeed. When they we met them personally, it was this immediately the very humble, very m extremely modest uh, approach when you meet her. No? This is always the co the concentration is not. Uh, the, the, the vain ego show, which is normal, the, the daily normally, it's everything about ego, ego, ego. Now, with Idil Beer, it's completely different. It's about um, how can we communicate with the music? You know? What can we make to create interest for these masterpieces? You know? And she, so she is an extremely modest, a very important artist, which should also teach generations for coming, upcoming, you know, also uh, think pianists, you know, how to behave, just 
don't be manipulated by the music industries. I mean, Idil always went on her way, and she, she, you know, she had to overcome also many obstacles. But never, nevertheless, she remained herself as a warm, for me personally, a very warm, a very dedicated, a very modest person, and um, which I'm very fond, and I'm very uh, proud to to be, you know, close to her. Yes, I mean, of course, when we were, we were preparing Les Preludes, no? so, you know, we know the very famous da da dum bum 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 So, of course, there's a repetition, and then when you, when you talk about the repetitions, it's not with Liszt always the same. So, the, the creating the, the nuances, in which way is repeated, in which way she does the repetition, in which way she is preparing the repetition. No? So uh, I just trusted in that, you know, sort of, now what is now the interpretation of Idil? No? How does she uh, transform and create uh, these kind of repetition? And this is, of course, extraordinary. I mean, this is just wow. No? So she really, it's, it's not just a repetition in the sense you repeat the same way. No, it's always a new creation. Uh, you know, the repetition of Franz Liszt are never the same. You have to be very sensitive about repetition in the work of Franz Liszt when you talk now about the details of the score. So uh, this very important topic, of course, melody line, and you know, which we everybody knows, even in sometimes in in in, in wrong. Uh, visions we we, knew, knew, we know about the abuse also of Franz Liszt no, for politics. So she is in a certain way also uh, um, kicking away uh, wrong interpretations, even uh, uh, manipulating music in, in giving it in a wrong context. This is guaranteed with uh, Idil Birid. She always will remain as a person, completely independent of any kind of, you know, uh, sometimes even dangerous political uh, streams and, and, and opportunism. What I li like about her is her, she is an, an not a conformist. She is going her way and, 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 and is always remains truthful to herself as an artist, which I highly respect. There's another side, of course, of Idil, uh, which is also her, with all, beside being this uh, very important artist, there's also uh, Idil as a teacher, Id Idil who is completely dedicated to her students. This is some, something giving very generously, in a good way, also in a severe way. You know, she gives, uh, we have a common point that when I, I love to, I myself love to teach, she does too, but she also expects that the students do their part, that they are serious when they come to our courses, no? for the quality. And so it uh, there always is the mutual respect no? is, is, is the basis to keep on certain cultural levels. And this is also with the teaching of uh, it will be it, it is guaranteed. There's hardly anyone who is able to also, then when she is working with the students, I mean, they, I think they're most of them are deeply impressed. I mean, this, uh, I mean, I have talked to many also of, of her students and, I, and I'm always, you know, I do also respect the privacy of, of student, you know, so I, 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 I did, a, I was in Bozen when I met her, which was at the concourse, and so I have, I had the experience when she was also talking to students, and that uh, was for me a wonderful experience. So we met everywhere. <laughs>